Okay, let's do some examples of problems now. Um, but as we do them, let's think about what we just learned, especially about the central limit theorem and when uh, we can assume the distribution is normal or not. So whenever we use the Z table here to find a probability, then we are assuming that um, the distribution that uh, we are using is normally distributed. Okay, otherwise these probabilities wouldn't be accurate. So let's look at this first one here. It says here pizza delivery times are normally distributed with a mean of 28.5 and a standard deviation of 2.7. So it's asking what is the probability the mean of a sample of five delivery times is greater than 30 minutes? Okay, so one thing that we learned is there was some rule of thumb where n had to be greater than or equal to 30, but here we have a sample of just five delivery times. <clears throat> so are we able to assume that our distribution of x bar is going to be normal in this case? What do you think? Um, you may want to pause the video and go back and look at uh, your notes or the previous video whether or not in this case we could do this. Okay, so um, if you uh, decided that it was okay to do this, then you are correct. And the reason we can do this, even though the number of delivery times is only five, and five is less than 30, the reason we can do it is that this distribution is normally distributed. So the first case was if the original population is normally distributed, then the distribution of x bar will also be normally distributed for any given sample size, even if n is less than 30. So in this case, we can go ahead and do the problem. Okay, so the first step is write out the x bar probability. So we want to find the probability that x bar is Le uh, greater than 30 minutes. Okay, so it's a greater than probability. And so now we draw my diagram, or we draw the diagram here. This is now d of x bar for n equals 5. So this isn't the population here, this is that distribution of sample means. And um, the mean of the distribution of sample means is going to be equal to the mean of the population, so 28.5. And the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means is the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. Okay, now let me ask you, I called this the mean of the distribution of x bar and the standard deviation of the distribution of x bar. So, but in an earlier video, we gave special names to these two. Can you remember what they are? So you may want to pause the video if you need to and go back and look and see if you can remember what they are. Okay, so if you said that the mean was the expected value of x bar and the standard deviation was the standard error of x bar, then you'd be correct. Those are the special names for these two. So. Okay, well, we're not done with this step yet. We want to find the probability that the, <clears throat> the mean of the, these five samples is greater than 30. So I'm going to shade this portion because these are all the possible sample means you could draw out. This is the portion of sample means that are actually going to be bigger than 30. Okay, so now the next step is we have to calculate the z-score for 30. So we're going to use that z-score formula for the distribution of x-bar. Okay, um, so just a quick review. Z-score formula for d of x-bar. This is basically just like a regular z-score formula, but you're using these as your mean and standard deviation. So you're going to take this x-bar that we want to convert, subtract the mean of the population, and divide by the standard deviation of the population over the square root of n, like that. 
Okay, so in our example here, Z is going to be 30 minus 28.5 divided by 2.7 over the square root of 5. Okay, got to get this in your calculator right. Uh, in this case, we'll do 30, 30 minus 28.5. And I get that. And now I'm going to divide it by this bottom, but i got to make sure that parentheses goes around the entire bottom so that it actually divides the 2.7 by the square root of 5 first before it, does, oops, before it does this overall division, before it divides the answer by that. And so when I do that, I get 1.24. And that is the z-score for the corresponding z-score for this sample mean. So now I write the z-score probability, the corresponding z-score probability. So I just change my x bar to z, keep the greater than sign, and that 30 is 1.24. Okay, so this is the corresponding z-score probability to this. So the probability that the sample mean is greater than 30 is the probability that z is greater than 1.24. And that's how these work. You always reduce it down to one of those uh, basic z-score probabilities. So this is uh, one of those three cases, right? This is the greater than case. That's case two. So we, remember, we look it up on the table, but then we have to subtract from one over here. So looking up 1.24, 1.24, we get... Uh, 0.8925 so this is 0.8925 <clears throat> so this is 1 minus 0.8925 and that gives us point one zero seven five. And that is the final answer to the problem, 1.75. Okay, that's the probability of th that a sample mean would be greater than 30. Another way you can think of it is that 10.75% of all the sample means that you could draw out here are actually greater than 30. Okay, so let's try another one here. Okay, maybe I'll let you, maybe you want to pause here and see if you can decide whether or not uh, you're able to do this problem. Um, and if you're not able to do it, can you tell, tell me why you're not able to do it? So I'll give you a moment to do that. Okay, so what did you decide here? If you decided that it is not possible to do it, then you are correct in this case. Okay, and the reason why is that this is not normally distributed. And so in order for the central limit theorem to guarantee that the distribution of x bar is approximately normal, our rule of thumb is your n better be greater than or equal to 30. Okay, but in this case, there's only 20 products in our sample. Okay, so uh, it needs to be 30 or more. If it's not normally distributed, it has to be 30 or more before you can um, do the problem. And so if I asked you, uh, you know, why are you not able to do this? What I actually want you to say is, um, we can't find this probability because the original population is not normal and n is less than 30. And so in here there's two important things. You got to say that the original population is not normal 
and n is less than 30. It's not enough just to say, oh, we can't find this because the original population's not normal, okay? Because um, if the original population uh, was, uh, I'm sorry, let me, let me, let me re-say what I was going to say. We can't just say um, that we can't find the, prob uh, the, the probability because the original population is not normal because if n was greater than or equal to 30, we could do it, right? And so it's not enough to just say that. But it's also not enough to say uh, we can't find this probability because n is less than 30. It's not enough to be less than 30. The one we just did had a sample of size 5. So if the original population is normal, you could do it even if n was less than 30. So you have to include both the original population is not normal and n is less than 30. Um, so on a test, I usually make those worth uh, 2 points, one for each of those, okay? And then, of course, if you went ahead and did the problem, you would, um, you would, uh, you wouldn't get either point, right? You'd get zero points on that. Okay, well, here's one more. So maybe you can pause here and look at this, read this problem, and decide whether or not you can, uh, calculate this probability. Okay, so if you decided that it is possible to calculate this probability, you are correct. And um, the, the reason why here, okay, it is true here that you don't know the shape of the distribution. So whenever you don't know, you just treat it as if it's not normally distributed. So <clears throat> you don't know, or it could, it might not be normally distributed, but you're taking a sample of 50 non-traditional students, and so your n is greater than 30. So you can do it, even if the original population is not normal. As long as your n is greater than or equal to 30, you can find the probability. So in this case, we have a um, greater than, I'm, I'm sorry, we have a between probability. So write out the x score probability. I'm sorry, write out the x bar probability. You're going to find the probability that x bar here is between 9.5 and 10. So it's a between probability. We're going to draw our distribution here. So this is d of x bar for n equal to 50. The mean, the expected value of x bar is going to be 10.2. The standard error of x bar is 2.1 divided by the square root of 50. And so both 9.5 and 10 are below the mean, so maybe 9.5 would be here, 10 would be there, and you're going to find the area between those two. These would be, this would be the portion of all the possible samples you could draw out that would be between 9.5 and 10. Okay, so now we got to calculate the z-scores using the z-score formula for the distribution of x-bar. So we got 9.5 minus 10.2 divided by 2.1 over the square root of 50. So we do each one, each of these individually. So 9.5 minus 10.2 divided by 2.1 over the square root of um, 50 and I get negative 2.36 okay um, so let's try uh, the next one so now we do 10 minus 10.2 divided by 2.1 over the square root of 50. 
10 minus 10.2 divided by oh 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 I'm gonna make a mistake there I had to hit equals and then divide that by 2.1 over the square root of 50 and I get negative 0 0.67 and you know what let me check this one out again and the reason I say that is because um, I don't remember getting this when I put the problem together so maybe I made that error I forgot to hit equals here because I almost did it that one time so let's see what I get put that in parentheses nope I get that again so I think I'm good there I must not have done it the right way the first time okay so now I got the z-score so now I convert this to the z-score probability so I'm gonna put z between these two z-scores negative 2.36 and negative 0 0.67 and so now with a between probability this is like the third case so we've converted this into a basic z-score probability that's case number three where you gotta find the area between so now I'm going to just um, find the two look up the two areas and subtract the two areas so negative on the negative side negative 0 0.67 I get uh, 0 0.2514 0 0.2514 and then negative 2.36 and I get uh, 0 0.0091 now to find the area between those I just subtract the two areas the small area from the larger area and I get 0.2514 minus 0 0.0091 and that's like 0.2423 very good and so uh, the probability of picking out a sample of 50 non-traditional students and having the mean be between 9.5 and 10 is 0.2423 and you can also think of that as a percentage where of all the possible sample means of size 50 you could draw out about 25 percent of them are going to be between 9.5 and 10 so okay hopefully those examples help you kind of put together the, the different ideas we talked about with the central limit theorem and the distribution of x bar so good luck on your homework and if you have questions, just let me know.